Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, we're going to talk about the top five annuals that I have in my landscape uh, in late summer. And that's important because a lot of annual things you can plant and, and, and look fantastic in mid and late spring and early summer. But what are the ones that actually hold up uh, right into the early fall? So those are the ones I want to go over in this video. I'm going to give a few runners up uh, really quick before I start my top five, though. Uh, this Kufia. Uh, in this spot and I've got several other spaces uh, in the landscape that I have Kufia in. Uh, looks absolutely fantastic here right at the end of summer. This is the, uh, one of the hummingbirds absolute favorite plants. If I uh, slide around uh, to my right, uh, this Angelonia is looking fantastic in the late summer. One thing I want to mention real quick on this uh, Angelonia is uh, you'll notice pollinators on everything I'm showing you but the Angelonia really is kind of void of pollinators for some reason. Uh, it's kind of uh, interesting to me that uh, uh, it's supposed to be a great pollinator plant, uh, but for some reason there just aren't pollinators on it. Uh, next up on my runner-up list um, is going to be Lobelia. Lobelia is a great annual plant uh, that just blooms and blooms and blooms. Uh, works great in the park shade. These little blue flowers or white, there's white Lobelia as well. Um, super, super easy and tend to make it through the heat of the summer. My Terenia, I'm gonna put Terenia on the list because Terenia is a great example of an annual that will grow in part shade or shade conditions. And there aren't a lot of those. This bee right here is having, having a great time on it. He can't get all the way into the flower, so he stabs the back of the, uh, the, back of the flower. You'll see him do that right here. They've uh, adapted to uh, get the pollen or get the uh, nectar out of that flower anyway by stabbing the back of it because he can't reach into the uh, center of it. I just find that super, super interesting. So Lobelia is on my uh, runner-up list. One other thing uh, on the runner-up list is this Ageratum. Uh, this Ageratum uh, I do from seed and it's basically just taking over this entire space around this uh, uh, clay era here. But it just blooms and blooms and blooms, holds up in the heat, holds up in the drought. Here we are right at the end of August, and it's looking great. A few more things in the front yard on the uh, runner-up list. Uh, one is Melon Podium. This is a variety that I bought uh, this year. Uh, this is last year's variety. This one will seed itself in, in the landscape. I actually like last year's variety better. You can see it's a little bit showier. The leaves are actually nicer. Kind of interesting um, that I didn't realize I was buying two different varieties. I don't even think they were labeled, but uh, you can definitely clearly see a difference but both of them are blooming like crazy here right at the end of August. Coleus has to be on the list of things, annual things that will hold up in the landscape during the summer and uh, several different varieties of coleus in the landscape. Uh, behind me here is Tithonia or Mexican sunflower and it just super, it really thrives in the heat. It wasn't until uh, the kind of almost the beginning of August before it really kind of took off. So uh, that'll tell you something about Mexican sunflowers. My last runner up is African basil. This is actually a perennial plant uh, if I was in like zone 10, but here in my area, it is an annual. This thing gets absolutely covered in pollinators every day. Uh, it just grows and grows and grows and uh, the bees are just constant. It's, you can hear the buzzing around this plant pretty much all day long. So I have to put this, um, Again, it's a perennial, but it's an annual uh, for me in my area. I highly recommend this plant. Uh, you can't get this from seed. You've got to get this from a plant. So you have to do cuttings year over year. Um, but if you can find this in the spring, uh, this was three little teeny tiny plants, and now it's taken about a six foot wide space by six feet by about three feet in height, and the pollinators are crazy for it. So let's get started on my top five annuals. This is another perennial plant if I was further south. This is a mahogany splendor hibiscus. I do these from seed. Again, for me in my area, it's going to be an annual. It's going to be killed back to the ground. I'm actually using these as a screening plant. I've come outside of my chain link fence in the backyard. This was from seed. These would have probably been eight or 10 feet tall at this point. Uh, they were just cut the other day. They've been cut four or five times. I can cut a foot off of these every other week. That's the kind of growth there is on these. They also have not received any extra water or any extra attention in any way, shape, or form. This thing just hits the ground running. It's beautiful all summer long. And you can see my uh, 10 or 12 foot okra uh, up above it. Number four on the uh, top five countdown is Solosia. 
Celosia just holds up fantastic uh, in the heat uh, with minimal inputs, really. Um, this was, uh, these can be done from seed or they can be bought as plants. This variety is called Fresh Look, and I have found that it really, really holds up quite well in the summer heat. Pollinators absolutely love it. Do keep in mind, if you're using Celosia, that it will self-seed. And so there are examples all over my landscape of Celosia that's come back from seed. Not that big of a deal to just pull it out like any other weed if you don't want it there, or you may choose like I have to just kind of let them grow here and there. Next up on the list is Gomfrina. And this particular Gomfrina is called Ping Pong, uh, is the variety. I've got pink and white. And these were planted just kind of throughout the bed edges uh, in the uh, front garden space. And they've just been unbelievable performers. Really almost nothing has been done to these. They were planted. This area was fertilized uh, in mid spring and that's it. Almost no maintenance. I, I come along here when I mow and uh, kind of weed eat them back to keep them from being out here in the lawn. They would be twice the size uh, at this point if I wasn't doing it. Pollinators are all over these all day long. I've got them in several places um, around the bed edge in the front yard and they're just beautiful, uh, just striking. And again, pollinators love them. Number two are pentas. Uh, pentas hold up just wonderfully in the heat. They really last. These were planted uh, in mid spring and uh, whereas some other annual things would have burned out by now, these pentas are still really, really showy. Here at the end of August, I could probably give them a little bit of a haircut. These things are so vigorous that they would probably come back out from that and start blooming again, you know, until I get a frost in the fall. This particular variety is called Bee Bright, and I would be on the lookout for these uh, in the spring. Number one on my list is actually not the showiest thing. Uh, it's this Summer Jewels Salvia. Uh, this is the second year in a row I've had it in this space. This is, I've got white and I've got pink. Uh, I set my chair here for the Sunday Q&A videos just so people, and you can see all the bees in the background. This is probably the most pollinator active plant that I have in my landscape. And again, it's not the most showy thing uh, in the landscape. These have been cut multiple times during the summertime. And what I actually do is just cut a few at the time uh, so that it's continuing to bloom uh, throughout the season. But this Summer Jewels Salvia, if you can find it, uh, again, I've never seen anything that it has more active with pollinators uh, throughout the day. This is another thing is a lot of these things, you'll have pollinators on in the early morning or midday or late. This thing is from sun up to sundown all day long. It's almost moving. So Summer Jewel Salvia is my number one flowering annual for the summer. Let me know down below what you guys have in your landscape that's still looking great right here uh, at, at the end of August going into September. Thank you guys for following along with the channel. Don't forget to subscribe uh, so that you see upcoming content. Thanks for watching.